In this video, we're going to talk about digitizing using the manual digitizing tools. And we're going to first focus on the different modes in which you can digitize using these tools. And so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the preferences to see what options we have. So I'm going to click on this program preferences, the little cog wheel here. And when I click on it, I'm going to go to the digitizing tab. And this is a very important thing to understand with the software. You'll see that I have the line input mode, which is also represented right here. And that is definitely what I recommend using. Um, then you have complex fill, satin, run, and manual, which this is has to do with resizing. But there's a mode for each type of stitch, your complex fill, satin, and run. And what these are are different ways in which once you set the stitches, right mouse click is like generating them, it'll determine what the software does at that point. If it's going to allow you to manually adjust some things like start points, end points, and angles, or if it's going to, if you want the software to automatically do that for you. I tend to um, work in the advanced mode for the complex fill and satin, but on the run, a lot of times I'm using the standard. But let me go ahead and change each of these to um, standard mode so that we can take a look at how the software behaves. I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is go to my manual digitizing tools. And like I said, this has to do with the run, satin, and fill. So if I come to the digitizing tools right here, um, you can also access them up here if you don't have the floating toolbar. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go to the run stitch. And I'm just going to create a run stitch really quick, just a couple, um, couple points here. And then I'm going to right mouse click. And you can see that it actually generates that stitch. So it's already done. Uh, I can move on and do my next one. And you can see the cursor is still available saying that, hey, I can keep going with the run stitch as well. And if I come over here to a satin stitch, if I create a satin stitch, and you have to define two sides using a satin stitch. So I'm going to come here and then I'm going to click on this one and right mouse click. And where did it go? I didn't put in the angle lines and stuff. So let me go back to that stitch. And even though I'm in simple mode, it's still wanting me to watch what happens when I right mouse click. See that um, on my cursor? It's wanting me to do the angle lines. And then I right click again and it generates. So. Um, I didn't have to put a start and an end point in, but I did have to put angle lines in and determine that just to keep that in mind when I show you the next thing. So I'm going to come over here to a fill stitch now, and I'm going to generate a fill stitch. I'm going to come back to the beginning and I'm right mouse click and notice that it just created it. If I select it and I go to edit, you'll see that it automatically put in a angle line and a start point and an end point. So now what I'm going to do is come back up to the program preferences, digitizing tab, and this time I'm going to choose advanced for each of these and hit OK. And this will show you the difference. Um, I'm going to come to the run stitch and I'm going to do that same thing. Where I'm going to basically mimic that pattern and watch what happens when I right mouse click. Notice that next to my cursor I have a green dot. This allows me to now select where I want it to start and end. I can, and it will suggest as well, which is kind of neat, but I could end it right here. So if you're working with a design that you really are gonna have to change your start points and end points with the running stitches, you might wanna go into the advanced mode so that right after you click the line, you can go in there and set it. For the most part, when I digitize, I'm really following a line and I want it to actually start where I first click and end where my last click was. And that's how the standard works. You'll see here, if I click here, I started over here, so it put the start point there. I ended over here, so it put the end point at the end. This one, I actually ended it right here. 
So it's just a different way of doing it. If you use standard, it will automatically put those in for you. Um, when you right mouse click, if you use the advanced mode, you're going to have the ability to go in there and click and place it where you want it. So now let's go to the satin stitch and we'll do the same thing here. We'll create this um, satin stitch. I'll come back to here, right mouse click. You can see it wants me to put angle lines in, so I'll put a couple angle lines in. And then I'll right mouse click. And notice at this point, instead of just generating it like it did that time, it's letting me come in here and define where I want the start and end point to be, and then it generates the stitches. And if I select it and go into edit mode, you'll see that it put those start points and end points where I placed them. When you come back to this first one that we did, it automatically put the start point here. And I'm assuming the end point is over there, but let's take a look if I drag this off yet. So the end point is going to be up over here. You'll see if I do a slow redraw. It actually came back to the beginning. So um, it, it automatically put them in. So that's one of the disadvantages of it. You can see it, there it is right there, um, is that it's going to put it wherever it wants to. And usually when you're working with a satin stitch, you don't typically end it right at the edge. You usually would end it kind of back in a little bit so you don't get the tie off little dot there from the tie off stitch. Just a little um, a little tip there. Um, and then now we'll come into the complex fill tool and I'll just replicate that. And now it's allowing me, instead of just automatically generating it, now I can come in and change the stitch direction however I want to, right mouse click, and now I get that green dot next to my cursor so I can set the start point myself and I can set the end point myself and then it generates the stitches. So that's the difference between standard and advanced. Standard mode is going to automatically do a lot of things for you. Advanced mode allows you to have more control. So like I said, I typically, I'm gonna come back into the preferences and the digitizing tab. I prefer to always have advanced mode for a complex fill and a satin, but I do generally work with standard for the run stitch. The only time I change that is if I'm if I know that I'm gonna need to change start and end points a lot when I create run stitches. And there are designs that work that way for me where I might run up and then back. And so I would definitely want to select advanced in that case so that I can just set it really easy. So that's how it works. You can play around with this. And this is just to get us ready for using these digitizing tools so that we know that there are different ways to use them and you can get, you know, like the ability to select your start points and end points and angle lines, or you can have the software kind of do it for you. And so I just wanted to point that out. Again, I do advanced for complex fill satin and I do standard for a run. So in the next videos, we're going to be focusing on these different digitizing tools here. And so we'll do a lesson on each one. We'll do one on the manual stitch, on a run stitch. We'll do these two together because they are satin stitches, standard satins. They just have a different way that you create the stitch. And then I'll do a steel stitch one, a complex fill, and an applique one. So we'll get started with the manual stitch first and uh, see you in the next video.